All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I'm gonna to show you what not to do with your aquaponics system. struggling if you've watched any of my series of videos before uh, with pH in my aquaponics system ever since the very beginning. It started off with me putting the wrong type of rock in the system for uh, my grow media which grows the pH up to about 8.2 and I couldn't get it lower than that. I switched all the rock out and then uh, also discovered that the hard water that I was adding here had a lot of calcium carbonate in it and I wasn't able to get the pH down below about 7.8. And uh, so then I added a filter to the water and got all my water uh, filtered and I've been slowly over the last few months, you know, trying to drain off and cycle off water and use it to fertilize our house plants and replace that hard water with filtered water a little bit at a time. Um, and the pH has been slowly coming down. There's still some carbonates in the system and uh, I tried to uh, take a little bit of a shortcut. And so what I did was I ordered some of this uh, pH down stuff, it's for hydroponic systems specifically. Um, and it was labeled as phosphoric acid or um, on the website. And uh, so I thought this would be a, a good thing to do as far as uh, bringing the pH down and adding a little bit of phosphorus to the system, uh, which I have done in the past. I've used phosphoric acid in the past. Um, but it turns out this, this particular brand and this particular product here actually also contains some citric acid. And uh, if we all know what happens when you add citric acid to an aquaponic system. Uh, I, before I started you know, adding this, I didn't read the back here. It says that it does contain some uh, ammonium sulfate and citric acid, as well as the phosphate. So uh, one of those things that you really have to pay attention to what you add to the system. So um, I'll kind of show you what happened and tell you a little bit about how I was lowering the pH. And we'll show you the results of the water test and kind of talk a little bit about that. Okay, so this is just kind of the results of the uh, water test that I just did. And I'll tell you a little bit about what happened. Um, I was adding the pH down solution very slowly, about a teaspoon at a time. I was monitoring everything very carefully. And I just added it every two or three hours. I would come down and I would check the pH and I would add another teaspoon of the powder. I just wanted to be very careful and very slow. I also checked the ammonia levels the first, uh, in the first day. I had also, well, like a dummy, just added my baby tilapia <laughs> to the uh, to the system as well, um, and uh, you know again I, I don't I don't know why I did that um, I should have waited but the tank that I had them in was getting very dirty and I was having trouble keeping it clean and so I put them in the system and I had just re received the, the pH down solute uh, powder in the mail and so I wanted to, to see if I could very slowly and carefully lower the pH over the course of like a week. Uh, the second day, um, after, you know, the first day I added every few hours, added a teaspoon to it, and the pH was slowly coming down. Um, this is what I woke up to the next morning uh, and uh, when I checked the system. pH was uh, down below 7, and right now I'm thinking it's probably about 6.5, 6.6 is where I'm looking at on this here, um, which is great. I'd like it to be somewhere between 6.5 and 7. <laughs> so that's good. We did accomplish the goal of lowering the pH. Uh, and it's held st held there for about a week, so that's good. But I killed off the majority of the bacteria colony in the aquaponic system, and the ammonia level spiked up to eight um, just in, in that 24-hour period. Uh, the tilapia, baby tilapia, started dying off. I noticed they were real sluggish in there, and I had a bunch of them start to start dying. Uh, I think I lost 12, 12 tilapia out of the 30 that I had, or 13. And so I'm frantically scooping out the tilapia and, and saving them back into their little tank. Um, the goldfish, of course, they, they can pretty much live through anything, which is why I highly recommend that you add goldfish to your system uh, if you're starting off or if you're going to be messing around with things like this, which I should have done this a long time ago. But uh, anyway, I, I won't uh, go too much into that. But the nitrate is, is holding fine, and that's just because the ammonia um, is not uh, being uh, converted into nitrate quick enough. And so the, the little bit of bacteria that are probably left in the system uh, that convert the nitrate they're able to keep up with that. So at least we don't have a, a high level of nitrate in the system. 
Um, this is a pretty big mistake uh, on my part, and it's pretty stupid. I, I, I knew that this was a possibility, um, and uh, you know, even though I didn't know the citric acid was in the powder at, at, at first, um, I did see it and think that it was you know just an additive, and it would be a small enough amount where it wouldn't wouldn't affect anything. And so, if you're ever looking to do something like this, uh, here's another aquaponics owner who will tell you, don't try to force lower your, your uh, pH or uh, your pH in your system. And definitely never, ever, 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 ever add any form of any amount of citric acid in the system. So, um, just a little, little lesson learned to share with you today. Um, I'll also, kind of take you guys through the uh, aquaponic system and just kind of show you what the growth is looking like and kind of some future plans. Okay, so this is just the, the grow bed number one, and I've got my kale planted out in here, and it's just really started to take hold and take off. Um, and now with the pH being lower in the system, I think we're going to see some really, really good growth. Um, I just absolutely love how the kale grows in here. It's beautiful, it's nice and dark green, and it just looks really healthy and good. Uh, and it's a nice little red ladybug hanging out on, on the back there, eating off any little critters that might um, try, to, try to eat the leaves. But uh, the kale has been great. Um, if you've been following with the system, you know I used to have kale in the system. Uh, it it kind of overgrew and we had been harvesting a little bit at a time and I ended up taking it out and I've decided to replant that in here after kind of a failed spinach experiment. So um, the kale's doing awesome and uh, I'm gonna continue to grow this out and we're just gonna harvest it as it grows. So as soon as the leaves get a little bit bigger, we'll start cutting those off and using them for kale chips and salads and all that kind of good stuff. So grow bed number two. Um, Mostly the peppers here. I've got a couple banana pepper plants that actually should start doing better finally now that the pH is lower again. I think we'll, we'll actually see those kind of start to, to pick up and take off once the system gets balanced back where it should be again. But uh, a lot of little peppers. Um, these ones are real small just because the plants are smaller. But I've got some, some nice big good sized red peppers in here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, good sized red peppers. And we've been harvesting these, um, you know. Every couple days we come down and grab one of these uh, peppers off here. They've been they've been growing pretty quick. Even though they're smaller, they still taste great. They are by far the sweetest, most sugary uh, sweet peppers that I've ever, ever had. Um, they're just very, very rich and awesome. So if you're looking to grow anything in aquaponic system, I think these peppers are so far one of my favorite things to, to grow. So just uh, this is grow bed number three, and again, more bell peppers, and these ones are a little bit larger. Um, there's a few more in here, probably one, two, three, four. I think I've got about four or five, um, and then another couple that aren't ripe yet. Uh, but those have been growing very, very well, same as the other grow bed. I've also got a, a tomato branch kind of finding its way in here. I'm going to have to cut this back and get a lot of this stuff kind of uh, out of the way here. Talk about that in a minute. Um, these, these bush beans, you can see a lot of nutrient deficiency here. These leaves are uh, not looking really good. And this is the way that these have grown for a long time, and that's just because of the, uh, the pH. So now that I've got my pH fixed, uh, one good thing that came out of this whole, whole deal is that um, the pH issue is kind of now resolved. Uh, I've gotten all those carbonates burnt out of the system and the pH down where it should be, and so now I can easily manage it and keep it where I need to have it. And I think we're going to see some, uh, some very explosive uh, of growth uh, out of these. The beans, no matter what, they, uh, they always are producing uh, little green beans here. I just uh, harvested four or five off last night. Yeah, I think I may have gotten all of them. There's, like, there's one or two down in there still. Um, but these, uh, these were constant producers for us. So um, I would like to plant more of these, actually. I may fill in some gaps with, uh, with more of these bush beans. And uh, they've, they've been great for us. So. Well, the, the tomato experiment here has, uh, I guess, gone with some success and some failure. Uh, these are dwarf Roma tomatoes uh, that I planted in the system just a few months ago. They've grown very well, as you can see, but they um, unfortunately have not produced very much fruit. Uh, they have not been setting a lot of the fruit, the, the, they haven't been pollinating, and the fruit that has set is growing really slowly. It's not ripening very quickly. so. I think out of all the, the growth we've had in here, we've only had five or six tomatoes for them, and uh, they're not even ripe yet. So definitely not uh, a bountiful harvest, uh, not, not, not a, what I would consider really a success. Um, but again, I know tomatoes do like a lower pH soil. Um, I've been stuck at about 7.5, 7.6-ish, and uh, so now, now that I've got it down to 6.5, 6.6, if I can hold it there, I'm going to see how well these, these do. I'm also going to go through and just clip uh, about three quarters of this out of here and, and prune these way back and uh, kind of let them restart again with the uh, hopefully being able to uptake the nutrients a lot better and so I'm not ready to give up on these yet I'm gonna really get in and, and figure out what's going on with these um, give them another month or so and if they don't produce after that 
they're going to hit the road and I'm going to fill this with something I know grows well, maybe some leafy greens or some herbs, uh, something that we can kind of harvest on a continual basis. So we'll see how that goes and, uh, and uh, take it from there. All right, well here it is, the results of uh, doing something that you know you shouldn't do. Um, ammonia over eight parts per million. So uh, something that uh, we'll definitely have to, to get fixing here. Um, the nice thing about aquaponics is it is resilient. So even with this kind of uh, crash in the state, it'll, it'll heal itself and figure itself back out. That's the, the beauty of the system. Um, it will balance itself and get back to where it needs to be. So, um, you know, I've done a lot of research and, and studied a lot about aquaponics and I've learned a lot with this system. Uh, watched a lot of other YouTube videos out there and a lot of guys that have systems. Um, even though I knew better, I knew about lowering pH, I knew the risks, I know what everybody says, I knew the citric acid was, was bad, um, I still went ahead and uh, um, you know, pushed the, the boundaries and, and uh, this is what happened. So, um, you know, he, I remember last year a guy named, by the name of Rob Bob, uh, who has an excellent channel, um, he's over in Australia, uh, he does a lot of aquaponic, aquaponics and aquaculture and chickens and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, he did a similar thing last year with his aquaculture system, trying to lower the pH just had a really slow drip of some acidic solution uh, in his system. Came back after a few hours, the system had crashed, and his fish were all dead. Um, so, you know, uh, just another example, hopefully along with mine here, that, uh, you know, be very careful if you're trying to lower pH. Lowering pH is the most dangerous thing that you can do to your aquaponic system, whether on a commercial scale or a, a you know, do-it-yourself scale. Uh, lowering pH is, the, is probably the most dangerous thing you can do. So. Um, Raising pH, not a big deal. Lowering pH, uh, you should not have to do because the nitrification happens over time anyway. Uh, but if you're going to do it and you need to do it when you're starting your system up, do it without fish in the system. Do it before you get your plants in the system. Get all that balanced out before you get into, uh, into the whole deal like this. Um, but, uh, you know, last week I posted a video about the, the cloning method that I did where it didn't work the first time, but I was able to redo it uh, using some advice and uh, do it a little bit differently, and it worked well. So. Uh, I put a quote in that video or on the uh, comment section about from Henry Ford that said uh, something to the terms of uh, um, failure is just a opportunity to do it again more intelligently and uh, that's what I hope to do here is kind of use this mistake and move forward. The one benefit that I do have is that the pH is now where I want it to be. Uh, so that's the positive that came out of this whole situation. Um, pH is down 6.5 and 7 where I want it to be for, for the uh, duration of the system. Um, it's never been that low since I started this system, and I'm excited to see the difference in growth here, and the plants should be responding a lot differently. I may end up getting you know, more fruit set on the tomatoes here. Um, I may end up getting a lot of the leaf nutrient deficiencies uh, that we're seeing here in the beans and peppers and stuff. I'm hoping to see that kind of stuff uh, go away over time, so um, there is a, a silver lining here for sure. Um, but uh, hopefully you found the video informational or educational in some way and uh, learned a little bit something about what not to do with your aquaponic system. Uh, we've got a lot of great videos coming up uh, in the spring and summer here, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you follow along. Uh, I'm going to be doing some different things here. I'm going to be kind of comparing aquaponics growth to outdoor gardens, and um, I may even do a mini hydroponic system and compare growth between the three. Uh, and uh, obviously we're doing updates on different growth and all kinds of stuff with aquaponics and the tilapia, raising them, we'll be breeding them down the road. And so, um, so follow along if you're interested in that kind of stuff. We'd love to have you. Um, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Uh, also at our blog, www.simplesuburbanliving.com. We've got all kinds of other information there, and we'd love to interact with you in a different way. Um, it's a way you guys can kind of post pictures and share what you're doing, and uh, we'd love to see that kind of stuff as well. So please throw comments down below on the YouTube video. Uh, questions, comments, you know, share stories, anything that you've done uh, like this, or uh, anything stupid in general is, uh, is welcome. So love to hear, uh, hear what you have to say. Uh, as always, I appreciate you watching. Have a good one.